In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the PS3 emulator for Android called RPCSX, which is basically just a renamed version of RPCS3 for Android. The phone I will be using in this video is a Samsung Galaxy S24 FE that has a 10 core Exynos 2400E chipset and 8 gigabytes of RAM. So no, I'm not working with a Snapdragon and that will limit some features. The controller I am using with my phone is the GameSir X5 Lite, so I will not be using on-screen touch controls. Now just to let you know, this emulator is still new and needs a lot of work, but it's still in development, so don't expect everything to run smooth with high frames. Okay, let's go ahead and head on over to the RPCSX GitHub page. I will leave the link to this page in the pinned comment below. Once you are here, scroll down, and right here is the latest release. Go ahead and tap right here. Scroll down a bit and under assets, go ahead and click on the APK file. You're going to get a message saying this file may be harmful. You have nothing to worry about. Download anyway. Now open your My Files app on your phone. Go to your downloads and you should see RPCSX. Go ahead and tap on it. Do you want to install this app? Install. Go ahead and open and allow for notifications. So the first thing we're going to do is add our firmware file. You can download your firmware file from the official PlayStation site. I will leave the link to this page in the pinned comment as well. Back over on the emulator in the top left, click on these three lines, tap on firmware. If you have that firmware file downloaded on your phone, we have to locate it. I'm going to my My Files app, Internal Storage, and on my phone, I created a folder called PS3 ROMs, and inside of that folder, I have three PS3 games, and down here is my PS3 BIOS. This is what the file will look like. Go ahead and tap on your BIOS file, and then hit Done. And you should see your BIOS loading in and I am using the 4.92 BIOS, which is the most current update. Now let's add our games to the emulator. Come down to the bottom right, click on this plus button, then click on the folder icon. Now go ahead and locate on your phone wherever you have your PS3 ROMs. In my case, I have them in that folder I created on my phone called PS3 ROMs, which is right here. Now your ROMs must be extracted to be in a playable format. You can use your built-in extractor on your phone to extract your ROMs, or you can use this free program here on your PC called 7-Zip. I used this program to extract my PS3 ROMs on my computer, and then I connected my phone and moved my ROM files over. And I am sorry, I cannot tell you here where to get PS3 ROMs, but they are not that hard to find. Just do a quick Google search, or you could check out my Patreon page, link in the description, and I have a few videos there that can help you out. Now let's tap on use this folder and allow. Now give the emulator a minute to load in your games. Now let's go back over to the left and click on the three lines. Let's go to settings. Scroll down and click on advanced settings. Then go to video. Now I'm really not gonna mess with any of these settings, but I do wanna change the renderer to Vulcan for better performance. As far as the resolution, in some games you will be able to run higher resolution depending on how powerful your phone is, and in some games you will have to lower your resolution. So if you get into a game and that game is lagging or stuttering, then you want to come back here and lower the resolution first. Let's scroll down to VSync, and we're going to go ahead and turn this on so we don't get any screen tear. And the last thing is we're going to stretch to display area. This will fill out more of your screen when you're playing your game. And that's all I'm gonna do here. I'm not gonna tamper with anything else. Let's go back. We can also go into core and under PPU threads, 
leaving this at two will be fine. Now, if you know how many cores your CPU has on your phone, then you can up this to give you better performance. My phone has a 10 core CPU, so I like to up this to four. And once again, I wouldn't tamper with this until you find out how many cores your CPU has. And it's best to put this half of your total CPU cores. Let's go back and back again and back to your home screen. Now I will not be using on-screen touch controls. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and connect my GameSir controller. Then when I connect the controller to the phone, RPCSX wants access to my GameSir X5. Okay. And we do not have to map our controller out. The emulator does it for us. At this point, we can go ahead and load up a game. And since I'm going to be using a controller, I don't need to see my on-screen touch controls. So if we click on this little icon down here in the right, it will make those buttons disappear. Thank you guys for watching. If this video was helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already.